TNTM The Show presents... Talking Nerdy. October 2023. With your hosts, Pablo Gunner. Oh, Slay J. And the Ambassador. And we are here to talk nerdy to you about the nerdy stuff that... We've been doing lately, right? Yes. Or we've we've yeah. seen... Ahsoka concluded. Yes. And so I want to talk about Ahsoka because I've been talking about it with everybody... It, I loved it. I thought it was a phenomenal show. I had a blast through and through. My biggest qualms with it, though, are that they had a spoiler alert. This is a spoiler review. That the best episode was, like, in the middle of the season. or Yeah, it was in the middle of the season. I was like, you can't top that. Because it was, like, Clone Wars, uh, like, the show in yes. Rebels... Uh, I guess more, more Clone Wars like come to life, mm -hmm. right? And and that that episode was just so good and so epic, and it's so funny because people talk crap about it all the time, right? Yes. They're like, "Oh, they're milking this cow," and they'll have like a picture of like a Vader or Anakin all like milked dry as a cow. <laughs> but people love it. I love it. Like yes. it's it's what the fans, the real fans, the people that watch Clone Wars, the people that have seen Rebels, that's what this show. It's, this show is for those people. And it's cool. Like, they did a lot of stuff from, like, like little callbacks from the animated stuff where it's like, hey, this ship's flying in the air this way. And then they do the exact same thing with, like, in the show. And it's like, it's cool. I've seen a lot of TikToks of them, like, doing it, like, side by side. And, like, even the dialogue's the same. And I was like, that's really cool. It's a cool callback to, like, all the hardcore fans that you know, have been there from the beginning. But yes, it's it was a great show. I don't I don't understand the hate on it because I understand it's just a little bit uh, slow at the beginning trying to establish the story. But that's with anything, you kind of have to be patient, and then it kind of hits you like a brick wall, you know. I thought it was the thing is I thought it was super intense right away because there was fighting. Like they send the robots after Ahsoka, and she's like in that little temple or whatever underground, mm -hmm. and like that whole thing was so cool. And then she even fights that an Inquisitor. Yeah. Right away, and that fight was so awesome. That was, that was epic, the lightsaber fight, yes. <laughs> I think a lot of times what happens is our imaginations get the best of us, and we go like, oh, it's Starkiller. The Inquisitor's Starkiller. Oh, that would be so epic if they yes. put Starkiller in. And it's Vader's mm -hmm. uh, Vader's apprentice, dark side apprentice, versus his light side apprentice. Yeah, that sounds awesome, right? And then when it turns out to not be that, you're like, oh, I'm disappointed. It was yeah. this other thing, you know, that wasn't as cool. And you're like, yeah, but you came up with that on your own, which it's like, yeah, that kind of is a, that's a really cool concept and idea. I don't know how it would actually play out. And it, it's obvious that they have this bigger picture uh, set because with Balin's skull, right? Like his... His lightsaber and so his apprentice, like, their lightsabers weren't full red. They didn't really look necessarily orange, but they weren't full red, right? And that was really cool, too, like, seeing them and just seeing all the characters, or not all of them, but a lot of characters from yes. Rebels again was so good, especially uh, Sabine. Sabine was yeah. good, but, oh my gosh, like... Um, What's her name? Elizabeth Win Winstead? Winstead? Yeah, she's freaking gorgeous. Oh yeah. my gosh, yes. Yeah, Hera. Oh, I yeah. love Hera. Like, that's the thing is, I loved Hera in Rebels, and then, like, her come to life was just, like, next level. And then, like, those memes and, and yeah. GIFs and, and TikToks, like, are <laughs> hilarious. Uh, but, yeah, it was, it was so good. It was such a good show. I felt like the lightsaber fighting was really top-notch. To me, I feel like they found that happy medium between the prequels and the originals where they weren't too fast-paced and they weren't too slow. And they had, like, that getting inside your head, like, kind of talking crap to your opponent, too, that, like, Vader did to, like, Luke, yes. you know, to get in his head, as well as, you know, the intense fighting that you see in Episode One as well. And that was really cool. And, and this, it felt very... Like, what Star Wars is supposed to be, which is based off of, like, Samurai, right? Like, that's was George Lucas's focus and main intention is, like, it's inspired by, like, Samurai movies. Yes. And you could feel that in this. And that's cool to go, like, when you get George Lucas's vision strong in there, like, you're going down the, the correct path. And also, it was cool having, you know, just, like, Hayden Christian 
Hayden Christensen come in and kind of almost redeem himself. Oh, in, yeah. Like in the in the whole aspect of it, I I I liked him back in even just the first or the prequels, whatever you want to call them. Um, but uh, you know, public perception was kind of horrible. But now you see him in this, and you're like, man. This guy can actually really act, you know, like. Well, to be fair for Hayden Christensen, well, the writing was not even close to being there. And how are you gonna build a if what you're working with is trash? How are you gonna make it good when you got lines like? Anakin, you're breaking my heart. It's just not going to work out well when you got cheesy lines like that yeah right <laughs> no you're completely right and a lot of people have posted videos and this is what i love about you know people looking back and stuff is that there is both good and bad in the prequels like they say like oh yeah i've, I've seen videos where they're like anakin had the riz back in the day and then i've seen the opposite too where like his lines of where he's like you know, where he's saying about oh yeah you torture me just because you're right there but i can't have you right? right like we both have these things going on you know and he's like i just i pretty much i'd rather have you just tell me to f off so that i don't have to deal with this anymore you know the pain and then he's like I hurt sand so both are there right <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> like both are there which is the garbage and then the gold you have both george lucas's gold writing and then his garbage writing and that's partially because he had too many yes men around him and he was too powerful at the point where he could literally just fire the 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 person that would give him a good critique right and then replace him with somebody that was a yes man you know it's my guess that you threw it out oh uh no sir no um were you in here cleaning up last night? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I was. Do you see that file on my desk now? <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I think I've proven my point. You are a worthless human being, Mr. Uh... Uh, Spadowski. Stanley Spadowski. May I call you Stanley? Okay. Stanley. You're fired! But I, I, I didn't... Get out! Which is what kind of <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy is in a sense, but has no idea what she was doing. But she's learned. I feel like she's learned over time because things have improved. Because even in in uh, episode three, when he, you know, like with the kids scene and that, just that intensity and kind of just like his building of becoming Darth Vader, um, I thought was just excellent. But you know, a lot of people disagreed with that back in the day. Right, and once again, speaking back to what the ambassador said, a big part of it was. Just George lines, Lucas right? being in charge and nobody going like, yeah, you know, maybe he should be killing kids and he should be killing Jedi Knights and Masters. Like, that would be way cooler and better. But I kind of fit, it fits in with the whole Sith, like, thing. It does, yeah. but it, it makes him irredeemable, too. Yeah. Well, the thing that would have really fixed those is different director. Like, let George do his magic. But he's always good under a good director. Mm -hmm. Look at Indiana Jones. Yes. What, the good ones. We're talking about the first three, not the <laughs> ones we don't acknowledge after that. But basically, George Lucas wrote them, but Steven Spielberg was what brought them to life. Totally, mm -hmm. yes. And he made some decisions on the fly that I'm sure George Lucas freaked out about that really came out as gold. Like, uh, originally they wanted... To have a, in Raiders Last Ark, a uh, nice, complex sword fight. Harrison Ford wasn't feeling well that day and did a <laughs> joke of a bang. And Spielberg was like, I love it. And they just did that instead. was such a perfect stroke of genius so having another director there can help a lot yeah if definitely. you're not if directing's not the strong point right, right. and even uh, ahsoka rosario dawson she was oh. great she is like perfect for the role um i man he I, it, there wasn't really too many bad casting decisions in ahsoka in my opinion i loved it like yeah. david tennant you know um, as Ku Yang, like continuing from from Clone Wars, uh, I think, and I don't know if he was also in Rebels, but yeah, like that, like there's so yeah, it was top notch. Like Ezra, that guy was 
It was so well done. He looks like the live, like, he looks just like him. It's crazy. And acted like it was so top-notch. A lot of people, I feel like some people hated on Rosario Dawson. They're like, oh, she's too stoic. And I'm like, she's a Jedi. And she's in her, (laughs) she's in that phase, too, of her, like, you can see her, like, in her master, Jedi master phase where she's, like, you know, like, chill. She's just, like, she's calm. You know, there are times where she gets pissed at Sabine, which rightfully so, yes, she messed totally. up. And there were times, and that's the thing too, is that she had her little redemption arc. Like, it was so well done. Balin Skull was an interesting character. His apprentice was interesting. That actor is a good actor too, that that Balin guy. I can't re- he's been in a lot of stuff, but... Yeah, he was Volsag yes. in the Marvel movies. Yes. And he was also the Punisher in, in Punisher Warzone. He is he is superb, and it's really unfortunate, and it's really sad that he passed away. And I thought, oh, this is going to be a one and done season because they didn't say anything about them recasting him. And so I was like, is that because they have no intention on doing it a second season, or is that because they're just leaving it to us to be like, well, let's wait and see how the show goes, the season goes before? Because now it's like, are they going to recast him, or are they just going to let that? They can't just let that. St- plot line die because it's so interesting yeah, it is, totally. and, and the character is so interesting too but who has that build because he's just like this towering beast of a man like he's huge and he's tall and that and then his acting is just so top notch it's like who can you bring on that's that good and i've seen one that comes close which is Liev schreiber okay because he has that same build he has that he's that caliber of an actor you know he can i'm sure he could pull off a beer like that and I, I think he could do it if they could get him. Like, I think he would be the perfect fit. Besides that, I've seen, like, other ones that are just, like, dumb. I'm, like, Jack Black. I, but I think that one was a joke. <laughs> but I was, like, that's a joke. <laughs> Technically, he's already in the Star Wars verse now. Yeah, he's that he, one dude. He's in, that uh, one retired uh, in, Imperial With Lizzo. With Lizzo. With Lizzo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He already is in there. <laughs> but that wasn't that. a big cameo they had there. Everyone was talking about Jack Black and Lizzo. You know who else was in that episode? Uncle Fester. Christopher Lloyd. The yeah. Doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Doc. Doc. Yeah, that was so good. Uh, yeah, it's. I just feel like they're going the right direction with the Star Wars stuff. Thrawn was so perfect to me. The only thing was like... Yeah, he physically didn't look exactly the part, but it's been a while since he's seen these characters. You know, if you haven't gone to a reunion from high school and then you see him like 30 years later, people's going to look different. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what do you expect, right? <laughs> so that's that's a whole other thing. But the way they left it too, I was like, are they going to do... I, I know that Filoni's supposed to do a movie. I haven't heard anything about them doing a show, but this show's called Ahsoka. And where she's at now is not in the same place that Thrawn is. They could literally do both. Where they could continue Ahsoka's story with Balin Skull and what he's doing. And I think she's even there too. Like the character of like, oh, this is where we're supposed to be. You know, of their journey. So I think they could do a second season of Ahsoka. And they could also do a Thrawn movie. Because it's like, Thrawn's there. It doesn't make sense to not do a Thrawn movie. That I mean, they kept on saying heir to the Empire... Which is straight up the name of the books. Yes. The the Legends books. That was the title. So, Filoni... Uh, that's another thing is that Filoni keeps on doing stuff on the sly that is so good. Like, he had that one episode uh, where he's like, oh, a long time ago, far, far away, right? And he had Ahsoka say, oh, yeah... Because Ku Yang was like, oh, I'll tell you the stories about this other universe, you know, about the stories and stuff. And she was like, tell me the first one. That's the best one. <laughs> right? Yeah. And you're like, at first, like, in it, you don't realize. But then afterwards, I was like, that was, that was <laughs> smart. Like, that was good. And then just continuing to do stuff like that, like sliding in, heir to the Empire, saying these things. He's sprinkling in these things for the hardcore fans. Yes. On the sneak. So that it's not too in the face of the CEOs, like... You know, so they're not going to lose their minds and be like, er, you stuck that in he's, there. You he's know. perfect for this, too, since oh. he's like a hardcore fan of it anyway. So it's like you're getting the hardcore's perspective thrown into this. Well, he's the reason why the Star Wars is TV series are being as successful oh, yeah, totally. as they are. Mandalorian is fantastic. Yeah, the only... Him and John Favreau are doing great with that. Yeah, the only mishap they had was probably Boba Fett. 
Right. Which was just I liked horrible. It. It was, I liked it too. No, it I liked it too. It wasn't bad. It's just like... It could have been better. It didn't do the character Boba Fett justice. It was True. great for storytelling and moving... The character forward. The character it really forward was just trying to plug him Mandalorian. in. Mandalorian. Right? That's all it was, right? Just it, plugging him in. Yeah. It, but <laughs> the, the big difference with like Star Wars and the Marvel series is... With Star Wars, you actually have kind of a showrunner unofficially that's actually moving things along. Marvel and that's lacking, so you get shows all over the place because they don't. Disney Plus had the idea of no showrunners. Yeah. Which yeah, probably to save that. money so the CEOs can make more. <laughs> yeah, <it's okay. laughs> You know, the big heads can make more. So, but I think this is a must-see, a must-stream, like... Or buy, or whatever we Whatever. <laughs> no, I mean, because yeah. the thing is, it's definitely worth having... If you don't want Disney Plus all the time, that's fine. Get it for this. Do your, do your one month and binge it, or, like, binge everything that's worth it, uh, because there's a lot more stuff on there, but definitely for Ahsoka. Definitely. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a must stream. 